Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. In today's episode, we're back working on the newest section of the layout. But before we get started, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and be sure to click on that bell up in the corner to be notified when I upload new videos. All right, well in today's episode, we are gonna build a restaurant for this section and we're gonna be using a kit from Foss scale models. All right, well, like always, we have a lot to do today, so let's get to it. Okay, so today we're gonna to be working on a uh, structure from the limited edition kit from Foss scale models called Rust Rock Falls. This was the large year-end kit for 2019. And the structure we're going to be working on is this one right here. I'm always so impressed when I see uh, pictures of Doug's modeling. Um, uh, just incredible. And you know, just a, <laughs> a quick reminder that the, the big year-end kit will be coming out uh, soon. I bet uh, the first week of August we'll be able to order um, the new kit for 2021. So uh, just a heads up on that. So um, let me show you where I'm at on this so far. Now, I made some adjustments or cuts to this side. And let's refer to the, uh, the photo. You can see there's a large dormer on the top. And I actually cut, I cut those sidewalls back one or two boards. Uh, so that it didn't stick out quite so far. I then cut the roof right to the end of it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a patio. We're gonna put a deck on this side. Now, the deck will be on the front and then wrap around to the side. And same on the bottom, there'll be a, a deck in the front and it'll wrap around in the side. Um, you'll see the deck right there. Now, you'll notice that the structure is sitting up on a, uh, a foundation. We're gonna build a large uh, brick foundation that goes under this. And then, like I said, we're going to put two decks. We're going to put a deck here that wraps around the side. And then another one in the front up on this story that wraps around. And then we're going to put a wall in right here with uh, two double doors. So I'm starting to build the decks and I'm building them upside down. And that wall gets put right here. So when I set the wall in place, there was a gap. Um, you know, when you're scratch building stuff, um, you have to kind of <laughs> make shims and sort of make it work. So I'll show you. So I didn't allow for the spacing that the uh, that trim that runs down, um, if that makes sense. I, it's hard to explain, but uh, I just had to put a little spacer in there so that when I put this wall in, it fills in that there was a little gap there and just filled it in. Okay, let's make our cap for the top here and we'll go across here and here. So these are all a quarter of an inch 
and now we're going to divide it in half and we'll score it so that we can fold it down the center so we'll lightly drag our blade over it So I'm just marking the center on each end and lightly dragging my blade over it. Okay, let's take a little break from this structure and work on the foundation. Okay, for the foundation, we're doing laser cut brick. And again, it's from Monster Model Works. And for the corner, they sell really nice um, corner trim. So when you join your two pieces together, then you just put that piece right on the corner. Okay, so we have a window that I cut out. So we have a window that goes in right there. And then for this area here, I am using a casting from Foss Scale Models. Um, I have another one, hold on. It's up on my pegboard. So I'll spray a gray primer on this and then we'll paint it and that gets put in right there like that and i'll show you quick we'll get our deck put on there and we'll get a deck put on the back side now the reason this is so tall is that the road in front of it goes at a slant so at at this end it'll be almost up to the edge of the clapboard siding and then down here it'll go all the way down to the bottom here so that'll just get buried in the styrofoam on the layout I find it's a little more difficult to film when I'm scratch building uh, it's very easy for me to film when I'm building a kit. Um, I, I've just become very used to it. Uh, but when you're scratch building, um, you just you run into problems. You're constantly making little changes and sort of making it up as you go. So um, I'm getting better at it, but uh, bear with me. Um, uh, I'll be doing a lot more scratch building or I'm leaning towards doing a lot more scratch building. So uh, you'll be seeing more videos from me in the future where I'm completely scratch building. Um, I'm getting more and more comfortable with it. So uh, I'm really enjoying it. Sorry, I sort of got a little sidetracked. Um, this little part down here, I'm going to make this a small little smoke shop. And it's... Uh, kind of tall because I thought by the time you put the overhang of the deck um, I still wanted to be able to see what's down here where if I put that right above if I cut the brick down and put that there then by you know you don't really see looking down on the layout you're not going to see the window or on this side you're not going to see much of that casting so by having that up higher and having the deck here when you're looking down you can it doesn't block the view you can still see you can still see the casting and we'll have signs uh cigar signs all around it so the back of the structure goes up against the wall so you won't see it so the um instead of using the laser cut wood 
I'm just going to uh, make the back side of it out of chipboard. Now, I get chipboard on uh, Amazon, and it's really heavy, uh, sturdy cardboard that's a sixteenth of an inch thick. So I'll cut my sections and then use eighth inch strip wood um, on the inside to brace all my corners and fit it all together. What's nice about working with chipboard is that because it's a sixteenth of an inch thick, it matches the thickness of the walls and the corner trim is sixteenth of an inch so it's just like working with the um, the wood. So I just cut a bunch of eighth inch strip wood and that's what we'll use for our corners and I will show you. Now this does not have to be perfect it's just to give some support to the back. Kind of run out of space here. Hold on a second. Let me get rid of this. Okay, we'll just use our grid to line everything up. If you hear that noise in the background, it is my air conditioner running. It is super hot here. Okay, we might as well go ahead and build this. Okay, it's not perfect close enough. All right, now we'll um clean up our mess <laughs> and start to paint our brick and then we'll paint our casting and the window get all that finished and get the top glued on and then we can work on our uh, deck that goes around it so I've been working on the uh, brick structure and so I first painted it all white and then sponged on some brick. So I want it to look like the white paint is peeling off and the brick is showing through. Then I sprayed the metal casting with a gray primer. Uh, just rattle can. Um, then I dry brushed iced coffee from Folk Art. Then I did Fawn from Americana. Then I took Ash Black, which is a shader from Ammo. And I just added some water to it and started doing a wash over some of the lower areas and some of the cracks. Now, let me get the cap on these. Now we're going to use green. Hauser medium green. Okay, let me try to zoom in. So at this point, just to let you know, I have been working on this project for, I think, three days. And it's not nonstop. Um, I'm doing other things too. I mean, work and so... So you can see I'm doing a combination of a sponge and brush. Now the reason I'm going in with the brush and not just using a sponge is because this allows me to get into the cracks and corners where the chip would the paint wouldn't really chip. You might not uh, hopefully this is showing up but you might not be able to fully see it 
I'll hold it up close to the camera when I'm when I'm done with it. So like here, you're going to want more paint towards the top of the boards than at the bottom of the boards. Same on this little door. Okay, it's starting to get there. It will help once we get maybe some more details painted. Let's take, um, I think this is old rust. We're just gonna paint the door handle. So we're doing it dark first and then we'll dry brush different rust color over it. I need to start wrapping clear tape around my bottles uh, because I use them so much and handle them and the name wears off. So I'll just put a clear piece of tape around it and that'll protect the, the name on it. So sorry, I know a lot of times I go to tell you what color it is and I don't know because it's worn off. Okay, hopefully this, I'm trying to remember to stay on camera for you. Maybe there's a little latch back here. Okay, now we're doing dark rust. Sorry about that, half the time I don't think I've been on camera. Now let's take, we're going to use a dry brushing paint. And it is light sand. We're going to use very little of this, very little. I'm going to test it first. I really don't have the best brush for this. I should be using a softer brush, but you might not even be able to see it on camera, but it's just highlighting the, the wood grain in any little raised parts. This is a beautiful detail casting. Absolutely love it. These paints, uh, you use so little of it that this will probably last me for years. Absolutely love it that I just have a specific spot for all of my dry brushing paint. And I have a variety of colors. Um, it just makes it very quick and easy. <laughs> so I forgot to mention that... Um, in the middle of the night, I built this little platform. Uh, this will get railings put around it, and then there'll be railings on this walkway. And then we have stairs that come down with railings on both sides. And then we have another platform like this one that will be right here and then we have a small set of stairs that go up to that platform and then i have more railings from titchy train group to paint and you can see it has the posts okay let's um do something with this roof Let's raise some of the uh, shingles just to give it a little texture. It's funny, I'm really jumping around on this build. Uh, I don't know why, I'm just, just bouncing around on it, but um, it's getting done. I guess that's the important thing. <laughs> 
Okay, well, I, I won't make you watch me do all of this, but I'm going to lift some of these and then I'll come back and we'll do some dry brushing and we'll put some pastels on. Okay, so all the shingles are lifted or, or at least the ones I want lifted. Um, next, we're going to do some dry brushing. And here comes my air conditioner. It is a super hot summer. Okay, so I'm going to use light avocado. Okay, that lightened it up. Now we could actually go in with the light sand. Again, we're going to do very, very little of this. Very little. And really towards the edges. It may look white on camera, but it's actually a really light tan color. So it almost gives it a dirty look. Okay, it's looking good. Now, some of you might not know this, but every bar on my layout has a little crow's nest up on the uh, top of the roof <laughs> um, it's a horrible idea for a bar um, to have a crow's nest but um, I just think it's funny so um, I add a crow's nest to every bar on the layout Okay, I think we're done with that. Just really adds character. So again, those shingles were this color. It's kind of a Christmas green. I spray painted a dark green over it and then also did a misting of a dark gray over it. Then I dry brushed light avocado and then light sand. Um, so there's quite a few layers on that. And what we can do in a little bit is add some pastels to sort of dirty it up. So I wanted to quick point out that the um, all the colors that I used on the roof are also used on the window and the doorway down here. So it, it ties it together. So I just got on my computer and made some signs for this structure. Most of them are from doing a simple Google search for old vintage signs. And uh, then I just drag them onto my desktop, resize them. And uh, I put together this, but then I just copied it. Um, that way, I have these signs uh, for the future projects. But uh, the top portion of this is the Flying Ace Bar and Grill. And the brick portion at the bottom is going to be a smoke shop. So I got lots of um, cigar and tobacco signs all right so let's start cutting these out and um some of them get rusted they're metal signs uh, especially the signs on the brick will be rusted signs because they're metal and then some of the other signs i'll sand the back of them to make them super thin and then put them directly onto the clapboard i cut out the three flying ace um, signs and held them up on the model to see if they fit. Now what I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm not going to use those. I'm going to sand the back of these and then cut these out and use them. Um, it's a lot easier to sand this rather than sand the sign because it can get like that it gets caught it can get folded it rips so a lot easier to sand it before you cut the sign out so let me find yeah some sandpaper i've got 220 grit 
Uh, I need something flat to lay under this. Use a piece of chipboard. Sort of drawing where these are on the other side. Okay, we don't have to get it too thin. Uh, I just want to get it a little bit thinner than the paper so that it's a little more flexible so it's easier to apply to the uh, clapboard siding. Okay, now we'll cut these out. Now, before I glue these on, I'm going to go over the edges. Uh, this is a cool gray. It's a number four. I mean, any any dark gray will work. I'm just going to go over the edges of the paper. Actually, I'm going to go lighter. I'm going to use a number two. I didn't like how that was darkening the paper. Okay, that was a hard run. And I thought that, I thought I was gonna have to cut another one and redo it, but uh, I got it to work. And it did tear a little bit in the center, but um, I think that's okay. It just adds to the aged rundown look of it. All right, well, I have a lot more signs to do, especially on the bottom, and probably put some advertisements um, up on here. Okay, the rest of these signs will all be metal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rust them. Use my very dirty tray that one of these days I'm gonna have to clean. Good old bittersweet chocolate. Yeah, I think I'm gonna yeah, rust all of them on this side right here. I might not use them all, but I'll definitely use their Okay, now I'm going to use uh, light rust pigments. We'll just do some streaks of rust running down it. Okay, it kind of looks like a mess right now, but we'll cut those all out. Or the ones we're going to use today. And then we'll take our dark brown marker. After we cut them out, we'll color the edges with the uh, dark brown marker and then glue them all in place on the model. Okay, I think that's enough signs. Uh, let's start gluing these on. Another neat trick is to take a sharp number two pencil. Make sure it's very sharp. And put some holes in the corners. This one maybe we'll do one in the center, in the center down here. So I don't know if it's showing up, but the graphite from the pencil leaves a silver mark, which makes it look like a nail. 
hold this up so you can see it. I don't know if you'll be able to see the silver in there or not. Now we can get these glued on. Okay, all the signs are glued in place. Let me show you some of them. Okay, let's take our pigments, do a little work on these signs, the flying ace signs. These pigments last forever because a little goes a long way, so definitely worth buying. Now we can't forget the back side. Okay, so some of you may have been asking why Flying Ace? Well, in my scrap box, I had a bunch of these little airplanes. So I'm going to rust these up uh, honestly, I don't know where these came from. Um, sometimes you just buy a, a box of stuff either at a garage sale or flea market and uh, there's just some stuff in it. Um, and I'm glad I saved them. Uh, obviously, they're way too small for HO scale, but um, I'm going to put wire on these and have some hanging as decoration on the model. So I think it's going to be pretty cool. Okay, so the planes are painted and rusted and put on there. Well, and as you can see, I added uh, lots of figures. I'm still adding parts. I just put this piece of wood along there. Uh, there's things when you're scratch building that you forget about, but I think uh, that definitely needs to be there. Same with um, underneath. Let me show you. Let me grab a piece. This is too thick. It'll be thinner, but um, I'll have to add a piece under there. And then there'll be posts coming down. I might have to wait for the posts on this until I get it in place. Because each one is going to be... Obviously, this one up here will be pretty short. And then they'll get taller and taller. And same with uh, over on this side, too. I thought about adding a possible water tower, maybe right here. I could even take out a little section of the railing and then have a ladder 
that goes up to the top right next to it. Um, I don't know. That might be later on. We'll see. So I think next I'm going to actually put a few posts and get my beam that runs all the way across. And I think that will wrap this up. Um, there's a set of stairs that go down, uh, but I may wait until I get this in place on the layout and then build that staircase and put a railing in. Okay, well, I think this project is done, at least until I get it on the layout and then I can add stairs, finish any type of bracing. Let me take the camera off the tripod and I'll show it to you quick and then we'll take it over to the layout and I'll show you where it's going to sit. So let me show you quick where this is going to sit. So there's going to be a road right here. And that road goes behind here and over. Now that road also splits and starts going uphill. up to right there. So the road in front of that will be at a slant. So I'll either have to bury those columns or posts or cut them. But that's where it's going to sit. Uh, I probably have Maybe two large structures there, two or three right here, and possibly another one right there. So maybe as many as six. Um, then who knows, maybe we'll even put a little, we could put a little one there, maybe even two little ones right there. But we're getting close. We're getting close to having all the structures finished and then we can finally start scenery work on this. Um, I'm planning on doing cobblestone roads on this, uh, some dirt roads, a water feature. So we have a lot of neat scenery videos coming up. So take a moment and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of those videos. Well, thank you so much for watching today. I truly appreciate it. Until next time, stay motivated and happy modeling everyone.